Hey everyone, Brandon Lee here with Virtualization Now 2. And if you're running a Proxmox home lab or production environment and you haven't heard of a tool called Prox Menu X, you're going to want to stick around for this. I recently came across this tool and within five minutes of using it, I knew it was something special. It might just be the best Proxmox management tool out there that you aren't using at least yet. Today, let's walk through exactly what Prox Menu X is, what it can do, how you can install it, and why I think it's a must have for both beginners as well as Proxmox Home Lab Pros. So first things first, what is Proxmenu X? It's an open source menu driven interface for managing your Proxmox VE environment. Think of it as a lightweight text based wrapper around a lot of commands that you might normally have to type manually, or you may have to dig around in the Proxmox web UI or web GUI for. Instead of memorizing long commands or jumping around in the web UI, you just launch a simple text based menu system and from there, you can spin up VMs or containers, manage your storage, tweak your hardware, pass through settings, you name it. And to be clear, it's not a replacement for the Proxmox web UI or the CLI. It's an enhancement, a middle ground, if you will, a productivity layer, especially great for those CLI driven tasks. Here's a quick rundown of some of the major things that you can do in Prox Menu X. You can get real-time system resource overviews, CPU, RAM, disk usage. You can create, delete, start, stop, or restart VMs and LXC containers. You can manage your network setup, including bridges and physical interfaces. Configure and monitor ZFS pools, add disks, and manage volumes. You can detect PCI devices, check IOMMU, and work with pass-through settings. You can also install Proxmox updates and package upgrades perform power actions like reboot or shutdown. So as you can tell, it packs a ton of useful functionality, all from a lightweight terminal-based menu interface. So why might you want to use this tool? Well, here are a few reasons that stood out to me. Number one, it's beginner friendly. It's great for home lab newcomers who don't want to memorize commands or who may not feel comfortable from the command line. It's fast. You don't have a need to dig through documentation or menus. Just select a number and it guides you through the process. It's lightweight, no heavy web dependencies or additional overhead. And maybe my favorite, it's educational. One of the things I really like about tools that I haven't used before is seeing what you can do from the menus that you are given. It may teach you about new functionality that you may not have known otherwise. I found myself saying, oh, I didn't know I could do that several times when looking through this tool. All right, let's talk installation. And the good news, it's super simple. Let's take a look at that process. Okay, so let's look and see how to install the Prox Menu X solution. So what I've done is I've just simply logged into the web UI of my Proxmox server. So what I'm gonna do is click the node and then I'm going to click the shell button to open the command line. What we need to do is paste the command for installation. Now the installation of Prox Menu X is very simple. We're basically just going to paste a single command into our command line window. And as you can see, it's a bash dash C and it's basically just getting the install script from this wget command, which is pulling it, of course, from GitHub. So the command that it's running is the install underscore prox menu X dot SH command. So now what we are going to do is just hit enter. And this brings up the prox menu X installation. There's not much interaction here. It basically just asks you, do you want to proceed with the installation? And we're just going to type a Y and you don't even have to type enter. It just immediately kicks off and goes through just a quick series of steps. It installs JQ, Whiptail, curl, Python 3, making sure that those are installed. And if not, it's going to install those. And there we see that Prox Menu X has been installed successfully. At the very bottom of the command output of the installation script, to run Prox Menu X, simply execute this command in the console or terminal. So let's see what happens. So we just simply type menu 
what we will see is this kind of a mini setup wizard, if you will. Uh, basically, it's just going to ask us, what language do we want to use for the menu? And as you can see, it's multi-language enabled right out of the box, English, Spanish, French, German, Italian, Portuguese. So I'm just going to uh, select English. It initially sets up our language settings. And there we go. So now we are at the main Prox Menu X menu prompt. After launch, you'll see a clean menu with numbered options such as settings, post install, Proxmox, help and info commands, hardware, including GPUs and Coral TPU, create virtual machines from template or script, disk and storage manager, essential Proxmox VE helper scripts, network, settings, and then exiting the interface. Let me walk you through each of these menus and we can take a look at the helpful tools that are available in each of these sections. So here is the main menu that we have out of the installation. And as you can see, we've got nine numbered menu options. So I'm gonna start with number one and just walk you through the helpful tools that are found underneath these menu items. So if we enter into number one, settings post to install Proxmox, it's going to launch the sub menu. And as you can see, it's select a post installation script. And we've got five options here, customizable script, post installation. We got Proxmox VE post install and XShock Proxmox post install, uninstall tools, return to main menu. So lots of really cool options there that we can run with these post installation scripts. If I exit back out, if we go into number two, help and info commands, Lots of nice tools here, useful system commands. And what I like is these each have menus that you can go into as well with tools. So if we just enter into useful system commands, you can see we've got lots of numbered options here that are command line commands built into Proxmox, but you would have to remember those commands. And then we've got nice descriptions of those commands. So we can either select a number or we can uh, enter in zero to go back to the previous menu. Next, we've got VM and container management commands, lots of commands here that we can use. We've got storage and disk commands. Again, as you can see, lots of these commands are quite involved commands that you would have to remember or potentially Google or go to ChatGPT or something else to find these commands. And this menu system makes it as simple as entering a number and pressing enter. Nice commands there on the storage side. Network commands, similar. Go down to updates and packages commands. As you can see here, we've got an easy way to update and upgrade, full system upgrade, update Proxmox package lists, show available Proxmox upgrades, remove unused packages and their config. So you can really easily control your up updates and packages there. GPU pass-through commands. This is a really interesting one uh, that is helpful if you're wanting to do self-hosting, run Olama locally on your Proxmox server, self-host that within your home lab. As you can see, we've got options to list NVIDIA PCI devices, list VGA compatible devices, VFIO, review VFIO pass-through, apply init RAM FS changes, VFIO changes. We've got review grub options for IOMMU. So all of the relevant commands there that if you've ever stepped through this process in Proxbox, you know, are going to be extremely helpful. ZFS management commands. Um, we've got backup and restore commands, manual backup of a VM or container, backup to a directory, backup all VMs and containers, restore VM from backup, list local backups, decompress backup manually. Those are just the few that are rattled off there. So lots of nice commands that are helpful. And notice system CLI tools. So we've got built-in tools that are helpful. HTOP, BTOP, IFTOP, IOTOP, TMUX, IPERF3, so on and so forth. So all of those at pressing of a button on this really easy to navigate menu system. So if I exit out of this menu, 
let's take a look at the hardware, GPUs and Coral TPU. So note here, again, related to GPU pass-through, what we've got are four options here, including the return to main menu, but we've got add hardware, iGPU acceleration to an LXC, add Coral TPU to an LXC, install update Coral TPU on the host and return to main menu. So if we go back to the main menu, Note this number four option, which I think is extremely cool. In fact, I tested this and used it. It's a create VM from template or script. So if I enter into this configuration, the create VM from template or script, what we see is a menu that pops up, choose the type of virtual system to install. And I think this is super, super cool, um, especially the ease of which we can perhaps pull down things like open source NAS operating systems. So if I enter into this create VM system NAS, we see tons of options here, including Synology DSM, TrueNAS Scale, TrueNAS Core, Open Media Vault, Rocksor, Zima OS, and Return to Main Menu. I'm gonna show you guys in just a moment how easy this is to stand up. Let's go back to our overview. If we go back down, we've got Disk and Storage Manager. So we can add a pass-through disk. We can add that to either a VM or an LXC container. You can import a disk image to VM, so on and so forth. So let's return back. And now we've got a familiar option or familiar in terms of the content that it, that it contains, the Proxmox VE helper scripts. If you're familiar with the helper scripts repository, the late developer who has sadly passed away has left us this treasure trove of scripts and utilities that we can run on Proxmox. And I'm really glad to see that ProxMenuX includes this wealth of scripting and other tools and utilities that we can use on our Proxmox system. So all of those things have been ported in here and you can easily run these by simply just selecting and pressing enter running those scripts. So really nice to see that that resource has been added to uh, this really nice utility. Now, if we go down to network, this gives us some network commands, not a whole lot, but just a lot of general information you can gather here. Now, keep in mind, we've also got all of those options under the, the scripts that we showed earlier. I think it was menu option one, where you actually have all of the availability of the network related scripts, storage scripts, and other scripts that are there. But we can verify our network, we can show IP information, and just a nice quick sanity check to verify your network if needed. And then going on down to settings, this is related to ProxMenuX itself. So you can, if you remember, we selected language. If you want to change that after installation, you can do that here. You can show the version of ProxMenuX, and of course, you can uninstall ProxMenuX. Nice to see that the developer has thoughtfully placed all these options here where they're easy to get to. You don't have to run scripts from the command line to perform those operations again. And then, of course, simply exit. So that's a general overview of all the tools that you get with this Proxman UX solution. Now, one of the helpful features of this tool is you can actually provision appliances directly from the menu systems, such as NAS appliances like Zima OS, Windows VMs, Linux distros, Mac OS VMs. Yes, you heard that correctly other Linux-based systems. For example, in playing around the lab, I used it to spin up a Zima OS virtual machine. After a few prompts, it pulled down the image, configured everything for me, no ISO wrangling, no manual setup, everything just worked using Proxman UX. I want to step through this process to create a VM from a template or script, and I want to show you guys just how useful and handy this functionality really is in Proxman UX. So I'm going to drill into the number four create VM from template or script and let the secondary menu launch. So we're going to choose create VM system NAS. So hit enter, and then I'm going to select Zima OS VM. So we're going to highlight it and then hit enter. This will create a new VM, Zima OS VM. Proceed with a question. So we can do yes or no. So I'm gonna select yes. We simply choose a VM ID. I'm just gonna select something random there. Zima OS, Proxmox, local LVM, memory size 2048. 
two cores sounds good and then simply we just confirm the configuration that we have just set so creating vm with the following parameters so think of this like your summary screen so i'm going to type a y and then just press enter and as you can see what it will do is it will automatically start the download of the image file and it will progress through installing the virtual machine. Now this is super cool because we're not having to go out, pull down ISO images, any of those resources, configuring the VM manually, all of those things. We just simply use the Prox Menu X interface. So it's making good progress. Once the download of the image file completes, then it will begin the setup inside of Proxmox as a virtual machine. And we'll flip back over to Proxmox, the web UI, after the installation gets rolling, just to see what that looks like inside of our Proxmox VE server. Now, as you see, it has extracted the image, it's transferring the image. And if we pop back over to Proxmox, you're going to see exactly what we expect vm id 220 zima os dash proxmox which is what we named it in the configuration script super super awesome so notice it says successfully imported the disk updating the virtual machine starting vm and it says zima os vm creation completed successfully press enter to return to the menu so i'm going to do that it says gives us a summary screen basically so if we go back over to proxmox we're going to notice that the vm is powered on and if i open the console let me open it here we're going to see that zima os is booting successfully we've got the build date which is relatively new april 21st 2025 everything is booting successfully see our services starting and we can see the web UI can be accessed. It gives us the web UI URL 10.3.33.211. And as we see the Zima OS boot and web UI is now up and running. So we are now presented with the configuration wizard. We can select our language, set privacy policy. We are to the point of actually installing and configuring this Zima OS NAS solution. So I think this is super powerful just to have this easy way to provision virtual NAS appliances, other types of operating systems. So you can play around with this. I just wanted to give you an overview of this functionality in the Prox Menu X solution. So that's it, Prox Menu X. It's a lightweight, credibly useful tool that I I found that simplifies Proxmox management, especially for beginners that may not have that comfort with the command line that is sometimes needed with Proxmox in advanced configurations. I think it's going to gain major traction in the community and hats off to the developer Mac Remy for building such a fantastic solution. If you're tired of remembering commands in Proxmox or you just want a way faster way to do common Proxmox tasks, give Prox Menu X a shot. Okay, so let's draw for the Geekum A5 2025 low power Proxmox server. So we've loaded in the YouTube URL. It's going to load all the comments. And now let's pick a winner. Timothy Riley, 4499, congrats. You've got one week to reply to my YouTube message. Congratulations. Let me know down in the comments if you've tried it or you plan to and what your experience has been so far. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more home lab and virtualization content, and I will see you in the next one.